Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Through a lot of our question and answers and through emails, I've gotten a lot of requests for my to do reviews on Palmetto State Armory. And for, well, I'd say at least a couple, three, couple, three years, I had a hard time getting any guns out of PSA. And fortunately, through uh, Henry Chan, we were able to get in touch with Josiah over at Palmetto State Armory and probably started getting some guns in. Uh, the first gun I got here, which we're going to talk about here, is the PA-15 Mo AR-15. And the second one uh, is going to be their uh, DK-47, uh, which is their AR that takes the uh, 7.62x39mm magazines, which that gun I'm very, very impressed with, but that's a different video. So, um, you know, Palmetto State Armory is very known for having uh, low-cost guns for as far as uh, their, you know, their, their cost. Now, uh, for the most part, uh, people who I've talked to have been very, very happy with Palmetto State Armory. I had no experience until now. So the opinions that you're going to be getting from me are based on the two rifles that I currently have for as far as uh, their quality and what uh, what I see in them. And uh, the overall quality that I see is very, very good. Uh, when I look at the when I looked at this rifle the first time, I was very impressed with the fit and finish, uh, the feel, the parts, uh, the way the parts work together. The parts definitely are high quality for as far as like the fire control groups, the trigger, um, the bolt catches. I mean, everything on it is it seems to be made of a very high quality uh, components. So there doesn't really seem to be anything really cheap about this rifle uh, by no means. Uh, even though that it has an MSRP of four ninety nine, this definitely would be a rifle that I would recommend to somebody for uh, getting into the into the sport uh, who wants a uh, good quality, uh, reliable AR fifteen. It's basic. Um, decent patrol carbine uh, it will do it will do that now this particular one is basically an m4 configuration uh, with the mo features on it of course the mo features i prefer much more so than the uh, standard m4 features such as the the mo handguard this has sort of a triangular shape to it more like that of the vietnam era uh, type handguard which i like i like the triangular feel much more so than the, than the round you have the magpul mo grip which uh, i prefer the myad uh, on every gun that i own every gun that i've owned or ever built has a magpul myad this is very very similar in feel it just doesn't have the uh, the finger swell on there it does have the remote compartment and you have the CTR stock. The CTR stock is a good basic stock. Uh, it's more comfortable and I think it's nicer than the standard mill spec stock as well. So uh, I, I consider those uh, design enhancements uh, by having the Magpul furniture on there versus the US mill spec. And the backup site that you see here is the Magpul Mo. Uh, the Magpul Mo is a rather cumbersome uh, polymer site. Uh, it's it's definitely decent. Uh, there are, there are ones that are better, uh, but for as far as cost is concerned and you know, keeping the cost down of the rifle, the Magpul backup site does just as good as anything else that anything else does. So uh, my first impressions of the rifle have been very very good. Uh, so let's start talking a little bit about what's what's on this rifle. We start from the rear. We have the standard uh, Magpul CTR stock. We have a standard mill spec uh, receiver extension with a, a standard buffer in it. The upper low receivers are manufactured from forgings of 775T6 aircraft grade aluminum. And to my knowledge, these are manufactured by uh, Palmetto State Armory in-house. Now, these receivers are extremely well made uh, for as far as there's no rattle. Um, aesthetically, I don't see any tool marks. Uh, I see it very well made. They're uh, class 3 hard coat anodized as per mill spec. Uh, the anodizing job done on it was very, very well. Starting with the lower receiver, as we already spoke, we had the Magpul Mo. The trigger we have on here is a standard, but it's also what they refer to as the enhanced polish trigger. The trigger on here is quite well. This one broke uh, right at 7.5 pounds. So uh, you had a, a very good trigger pull on here. For as far as the trigger guard is concerned, you got more of the Magpul uh, type enhanced trigger guard here, which allows you to get your fingers in there if you have uh, heavy gloves on. Now the uh, magazine release is all standard. You do have a standard safety on here as well. Um, the lower receiver is basically standard M4. Uh, we're going to go over to the other side. We're going to see you know, uh, one little difference. Um, but when we do go to the other side, you can see the little dimples that are located on the front pivot pin and the rear takedown pin, which allow you to use a bullet tip to uh, push those pins out if they're difficult, um, which is a little bit of an enhancement. Uh, quite frankly, this rifle didn't require that. You could just pop these right out by hand. As you can see, we have a standard bolt catch, standard safety. Looking at the upper receiver, we have the uh, forward assist, uh, fire cartridge case deflector, as well as the uh, standard injection port cover. Now the barrel is your typical mill spec, uh, manufactured out of 4150 chromoly vanadium uh, with a 1 and 7 inch twist, 6 right lands and grooves, nitrate treated. Uh, this definitely is uh, more of the current trend of going, getting away from the manganese phosphate and going to the nitrate uh, coating. The front sight base, as I'm very pleased to show, is drilled and pinned. Uh, this is a this is a very big reliability enhancement, and most of the time when you see front sight bases that are standard mill spec, you will see that. 
we do have a proper aftermarket front sight base, which allows you to uh, have the proper distance for use with the backup sight. Because again, the, uh, with having the flat top rail, when you put a sight on here, uh, you are slightly higher than you would that of a standard rifle where you had a fixed carrying handle on front sight. So it's just a, just a little bit higher. So you have just a little bit sitting up higher on the front sight base. Now, companies who choose not to go with the, with the F-Mark mil spec front sight base generally go the longer uh, front sight post. We have a standard A2 style uh, compensator on the on the end here. We do have we do have a sling, and again we have the Magpul Mo uh, uh, handguards black, and we have a carbine length gas system. We're gonna take a look at the bolt carrier right now. The bolt carrier is standard mill spec. The carrier is made of A620 stainless steel, and you also have manganese phosphate. You have chrome plating on the inside of the, the bolt carrier as well as the inside of the carrier key. You do have properly as per mill spec state. Uh, carrier key. You have a you have a Carpenter 158 bolt, which is standard mill spec, and you do have the rubber O-ring on the extractor as well. So basically, you have a standard mill spec type bolt carrier here. You have extended M4 feed ramps, which you would have expected on any uh, modern M4 type carbine. So overall, you have a gun very similar to what you get out of that of a LE6920 Colt, uh, for as far as the specifications of the uh, of the rifle. Uh, and Colt also offers a mo. But looking at, looking at the cost of this, again, you're looking at $4.99 for this rifle. So what do you get for that? Well, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take this out to the range and we're going to see how it shoots. Now, overall, this is a, this is equivalent to that of any uh, M4 carbine I've ever shot. I will not say that it shoots any better or worse than any Colt, uh, any LMT, any you know uh, American Tactical or anything. You know, you have a very good barrel on here. Uh, reliability was 100. percent We did some messing around with the uh, lab radar as well to see how we got with velocities. Now, the ammunition I tested this with was, was the Black Hills 223. Uh, now the Black Hills 223 is a 223 cartridge out of 556, so we had an overall uh, muzzle velocity of 2,906 feet per second. Um, if this was a 5.56 millimeter uh, cartridge, you probably would have another 100 feet a second or so on it. I wanted to see how this thing shot because I had never shot a Palmetto Starmory before. So I put over a thousand rounds out of this, uh, out of uh, Black Hills 223 ammunition. And I did uh, put a few rounds of some Gecko ammunition as well. And the Gecko was a slightly higher velocity of 3,042 feet a second. It too was a 223, but it was loaded up to more of the 5.56 specifications. Now the optic I chose to use on this was the, the Vortex Razor uh, AMG. Now, uh, I've just had a chance over the last uh, probably say two or three months to mess around with some of the Vortex uh, type optics, and I have to say I've been very, very, very impressed with them. Uh, this particular uh, red dot, this is this would be very similar to that of like an Aimpoint 
uh, or such, but we have a red dot in there. And I have to say this worked out very, very well. Um, MSRP is not inexpensive. It actually costs more than the gun does at 649 It is a one, a one power magnification, so it's uh, ideal for close quarter battle. Uh, these sights are designed for you to keep one of your eyes open uh, when you're engaging with it, and it works very, very, very well doing that. You have unlimited eye relief, uh, half MOA adjustment gradu uh, graduations, one half MOA adjustment. Uh, you have parallax settings, parallax free, length is 3.6 inches, weight 11.8 ounces. It's powered by a CR123 battery, which is a very, very common battery. Uh, you have a good extended uh, life on it. You have 15 settings of brightness, uh, so depending on your ambient light, you adjust as, as so. One of the things that people uh, make a mistake using these red dot type scopes is, is they put uh, the higher brightness on than they need, and it washes out the target. Uh, you just need enough where you're able to see it. You don't want to get all the halo around it, so you want to make sure that you have it adjusted properly for your, your ambient finish. You have an armor track coat on an aluminum uh, outer body. Argon gas purged, uh, multi-coated anti-reflection lens coatings as well, and it comes with a uh, with a throw lever mount, uh, which I like very much. So, and also when you engage your backup sights, you have co-witness. So if your battery was to go out in a very inopportune time, you would be able to uh, still use your iron sights, which is a very big benefit. Now, uh, for as far as having the front sight base on it, you know, is it better to have a folding front sight base? It is. But uh, I tell you, these days you're seeing very few people with uh, gas blocks where they're drilling and pinning them. So I think I would rather have a drilled and pinned tall gas block and have this slightly interfering with my uh, with my line of sight than I would have a gas block on there that's uh, just held on with set screws that could possibly migrate forward at an inopportune time. My overall opinion of this rifle is very, very good. The quality appears to be very, very good. It seems to be up to par with the arrow precisions that I shoot, which are similar uh, on the price point, you know, um, a lot of times you associate price with quality, and sometimes that's not the case. And I think with a lot of the Palmetto State Armory guns, uh, I think that's a lot what it has to do with. Now, for as far as what other people say, I got to tell you, I don't go for what other people say. You know, some people say they've had problems with these guns. Some of them say they're good. Well, the opinion I'm going to give you is what I have with the guns that are in front of me. And again, because I didn't have a lot of uh, experience with these guns, I put a lot of rounds through it. Uh, as I said, I put well over a thousand rounds through it, uh, and it wasn't cleaned in any of those thousand rounds either. It was just lubricated. And I had not a single malfunction uh, with it whatsoever. Um, point of aim never never really changed. You know, it's not a tack driver. It's not supposed to be. The groups were shot at, you know, all at 50 yards with this rifle, and they all tended to be you know, around an inch to two inches at 50 yards, which is what I would have expected from uh, any military-grade type rifle like this. I would expect it to be cutting inch, uh, inch or half-inch holes at 100 yards. But it's exactly what it's designed for. It's a standard uh, type rifle. So you're going to be seeing another review, as I said, on the uh, KS-47 762x39 coming up. And uh, we, now that we have a rapport with Palmetto State Armory, we hope to be getting more of their guns in for review so we can try some of the different models. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying one of their 9 milliers when they become available again. So if you all have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, if you enjoy this, please click like, please subscribe, even better share.